I, male, 38, got married to my wife Amanda, female, 32, three years ago. Amanda comes from a very close-knit family. Her parents are still together and very much in love. And she has two sisters, all older. The eldest one is Stacy, 38, and she has twin boys, both eight years old. Her husband, Jeremy, male, 41, is the sole breadwinner for their family, while Stacy is a stay-at-home mom and looks after most of the childcare and over 50% of the chores. The other sister is Vivian, 35. Vivian is an artist and a marvellous one at that. She has always been slightly eccentric and is engaged to be married by the end of the year. The family dynamics of my wife had always struck me as odd ever since I started dating her. I met Amanda five years ago at a party. A mutual friend introduced us to each other and we had fun on that day. We exchanged numbers but nothing really happened beyond that. A few weeks later, the same friend took us along with him for a double date, and that's when we realized that we had quite a few things in common and that we could take this forward. When we had our first solo date, I could sense something was weird. We had met up for dinner at a fancy place, and I could see a weird woman wearing sunglasses and a cap inside the restaurant at night, looking in our direction. She really creeped me out, and I feared it was either a mad woman or a serial killer, stalker of some sort. I pointed her out to Amanda and asked her if we could go to some other place to eat because that woman seemed dangerous. Amanda just laughed it off and said that I was overthinking and that she felt comfortable there. Though I didn't want to stay there, I also didn't want to pressure her into going anywhere. She didn't want to go, so we had our dinner. A couple of minutes later, I saw that woman leave, so I relaxed even more. As many of you might have guessed, that woman was her sister, Stacy. I got to know about that years later after Amanda and I had gotten engaged. Apparently, it was funny to the three sisters. Not so much Viv. She has always seemed to be the sanest of the lot to me, but the three sisters have weird codependency issues. I understand that they are siblings and have a close bond, which is probably the result of a happy family. I wouldn't know because I come from a mixed household and I am estranged from almost every single one of them except surprisingly my stepmother. All the rest of my family was toxic and manipulative and it was only because of my stepmom that I'm still alive today. Anyway, that's beside the point. The point is that Stacy, Vivian and Amanda are extremely close. They share everything with each other, every single detail of their lives, even of my life. I've told Amanda repeatedly that I don't like how she shares all my issues and stuff with her sisters. But she just scoffs at me and says that all siblings share these things with each other. But that I wouldn't know because I don't have siblings. And that is correct. So even though I felt uneasy about this, I realize that I'm not the correct person to make these sort of judgments. And I have learned to accept this about my wife's family. However, Something happened during my wedding day that just made me lose all respect for Stacy. Stacy had eloped with her boyfriend 10 years ago. That was what she had wanted at the time. Gradually, however, within five years of being married, she came to realize that her wedding was not her dream wedding, and she wanted to redo the whole ceremony with a large number of guests and a good venue. Her husband flat out refused. He said that he would not be using his money to fulfill unnecessary whims and that as parents, they needed to prioritize saving money for the boys. This did not sit well with Stacy, and all the sisters went to convince Jeremy that he was being cruel and insensitive. I had been dating Amanda for about a year when this had happened and I had tried to gently tell her that Jeremy was right. And as parents, if the financial situation could not take frivolous expenses, they had to prioritize the boys over anything else. But Amanda didn't listen. Jeremy is a tough guy though, and when all the sisters tried to hound him, he said tough shit and didn't give in to the pressure. Stacy was miserable, and she made everyone else miserable, but he didn't budge. Gradually, she dropped the idea. A few months later, I proposed to Amanda. We planned our wedding, and unlike most couples, our wedding planning actually strengthened our bond. We worked as a team, decided everything together, and just worked with each other in unison. So naturally, it came as an utter shock to me when, on the day of the wedding, Stacy came in wearing white as well. I thought Amanda would be offended, but she was grinning from ear to ear. In her bride speech, 
She said that she wanted to share her wedding day with her sister who couldn't have the ceremony of her dreams. Jeremy heaved such an exasperated sigh that I think people in Cuba heard him. He was just done with Stacy's antics. I, on the other hand, felt really blindsided. After the ceremony, I asked Amanda why she didn't bother to tell me that she was planning on doing something like this. She said she didn't mind her sister wearing white, so she couldn't understand why I was so worked up about it. I told her that it was not just her wedding day, it was mine too. It was our wedding day that she unilaterally decided to share with her sister. I told her that wedding days are about the love between a man and a woman, not two sisters. I told her that I felt like an extra appendage on my own wedding. We had a huge fight, I think probably the biggest fight of our entire relationship, and I got so mad I told her to get her sisters for the honeymoon as well because I didn't want to go. She was refusing to understand my side of the story, but I don't know how. After a few days later, sense prevailed upon her. God knows what changed, but something did, and she decided to distance herself a bit from her sisters and work on our marriage because it had started out on a rocky note. Ironically enough, it was Jeremy and Viv who had texted me right after the wedding and asked me if I was okay. Jeremy even apologized on behalf of Stacy and offered to take me out as some sort of peace offering. <laughs> He's a good guy. I decided to bury the hatchet and things have been better since then, but I'm still salty with Stacy for doing what she did. And I know it sounds petty coming from a middle-aged man, but I have been waiting for the correct opportunity to get back at her. I got the opportunity a few weeks ago. I had taken a half day at work and was chilling at a cafe with my friends when I saw Stacy walk in with some dude. Now, the thing about this cafe is that it is located at the end of town, so her coming here seemed a little off to me. Anyway... I didn't want to go and chat with her because she would end up eating my time with my buddies. I ignored her and hoped that she wouldn't see me and went on chilling with my friends. Stacy and the guy were there for a long time and the way they were touching each other and giggling, it really seemed that they were not just friends. I felt like a creep snooping on them, but I couldn't help myself. Just after my friends and I left the cafe, Stacy and her friend followed suit. I saw them kiss each other and all my suspicions were confirmed. Stacy was cheating on Jeremy. I couldn't believe my eyes. That man had done everything to provide for her and the kids and it was so easy for her to come out and cheat as if Jeremy meant nothing to her. Stacy and the dude went in separate cars and I decided to follow him to know where he lives and who he is. I knew I had to expose Stacy but only with enough evidence. She's a cunning fox, and if I left a single fricking loophole, she would exploit it and turn the situation around. So I started my snooping. I found out where he lived. Over the course of the next week, I made some inquiries and I also found out who he was and what he did. So this guy was Nathan, 39, and he and Stacy were batchmates in college. He apparently had a huge crush on her, but she was never interested in him that way. They had reconnected a few years ago, and probably this had been going on since then. I was disgusted. I could not believe it, or maybe I did not want to believe it. But whatever it was, I knew that I had to expose her. Initially, I wanted to tell Amanda about whatever I discovered, but considering how she and Stacy were joined at the hip, I thought it would just end up backfiring because she would either not believe me or would go ahead and confront her sister. None of the two things were conducive to my plan. So I started plotting. I had figured out that Stacy and Nathan met at the same cafe at the same time twice a week. I bribed the barista there and extracted as much information as I could. So every Thursday and Monday evening, Nathan and Stacy walked in. Sometimes they went to an allied hotel but sometimes they didn't. Both the days, Thursday and Monday, are when Jeremy has to work longer hours to make more money for the family. So I paid the barista a large sum of money and got her in on my plan. I told her that she had to organize a couple of contests or something in the cafe and install a kissing booth kind of thing where the winners would kiss. Knowing Stacy, I knew she would participate. We fixed a date for this. Then I privately called up members of the family saying that I wanted to take them out on a treat on Thursday. 
the day of the contest and the expose. Stacy flat out refused because she had other plans, but everyone else agreed to come. I hadn't told Amanda where we were going and just told her that it was a surprise. I told Jeremy that it would be kind of an adult's thing, but that I would arrange for and pay a babysitter for the kids. The plan had been set in motion and it was rolling. I had been in constant touch with the barista and she had said that she had informed Stacy and Nathan of the competition and both of them were very excited to participate. So far, so good. Now, we only had to catch them red-handed before we blew up at them. It was D-Day yesterday and everything went on even better than I had expected or imagined. The contest was to start around 5.30 p.m. and the barista, Mira, had estimated that the final kissing booth thing would start by around 6.30. I timed myself accordingly and the entire family, Viv, Amanda, Jeremy, me, and my father-in-law and mother-in-law stuffed ourselves in two cars and went. Just as I took the turn to this particular cafe, I could see Amanda getting visibly stressed. I asked her if everything was okay and she said yes, but something felt off about her. I shrugged it off. I had a lot on my plate at that moment. I checked in with Mira and she said that we were in time and the kissing booth thing was just about to start. Two minutes after we entered, Stacy and Nathan started making out in front of everyone at full display. It was a horrifying sight to watch. Jeremy just stood there, defeated, and my father-in-law and mother-in-law were livid. I tried to act confused and asked if that was really Stacy, and Amanda just mumbled, yes, it was. Stacy and Nathan won the stupid contest, and then came the icing on the cake. Mira got up to announce the winner, and she went on to say this entire speech of how this was the most regular couple to the cafe, and that she knew in her heart of hearts that they would win, and she managed to sneak in how both of them had come to the cafe every Monday and Thursday for the last year at least. It was terrific. In the middle of this ode to her extramarital love, Stacy's eyes landed on us. I could see her getting pale as a sheet when she saw the entire family, but she was done for. At this point, there was nothing that she could do to save herself, and that was what I had wanted. She ran over to us trying to explain that this was a mistake, but Jeremy just walked away, and I went to him to console him. The man was about to break into tears. I felt so bad for him finding out this way, but I knew that anything less than this and Stacy would find a way to wriggle out of it. The party was cut short, obviously, and Jeremy took his car and left. When I went back to the cafe, I saw Stacy, Amanda, and my in-laws all yelling at each other. Stacy was furious at Amanda for not informing her that we would be coming, and my in-laws were yelling at Amanda because apparently she knew that Stacy had been cheating on Jeremy and had not said anything. I was stunned. I could not believe that my own wife would condone cheating, and it made me look at her in a very different light. I could see all respect for her evaporating in my eyes. I just told everyone to not create a scene and that we had to go back home. Amanda and I aren't talking. I honestly cannot even bear to see her face after what she has done. As far as I know, my in-laws are staying with Jeremy, and he has thrown Stacy out of the house. The kids don't know what's happening, so they've been sent to live with Viv for a few days as a treat. The family is in shambles, and while I feel guilty that it is because of me, I also know that Stacy is the bigger culprit for cheating on her doting husband and setting forth in motion this series of events that are on the verge of destroying the family. Update 1. It has been two days since Stacy's affair was exposed, and I came to know about Amanda's knowledge, if not active involvement, in the same. We haven't really talked to each other besides the basics. I really don't know what to say to her, and to be honest, the very sight of my own wife disgusts me to the core at this point. She, on the other hand, is on some sort of weird ego trip because she wasn't talking to me either. However, when I came back from work today, she said she wanted to talk about something. I thought she had decided to come clean and tell me about what she knew about the affair, but what she said was poison to my ears. She told me that Jeremy was refusing to take Stacy back, and since the kids were with Viv, Stacy had first asked her parents to allow her to live with them, but they flatly refused. 
So my in-laws are conservative in nature and they take marriage and family and cheating very seriously. They have categorically refused to have anything to do with Stacy. This is why Amanda wanted to know if I was okay with Stacy living with us until things cooled down with Jeremy. That was when I lost all semblance of self-control and sanity. I told her that she had to be kidding me if she felt that I could ever house a cheater under my roof, especially knowing how broken Jeremy was. And I said Jeremy had every right to throw Stacy out of the house and had every reason to feel livid and broken. He did not need to cool down. Her sister needed to realize what she had done. Amanda started screaming, saying that I didn't know shit and I was wrong to judge Stacy for what she did. So Stacy had fed Amanda's head with lies, saying that Jeremy was abusive. And this Nathan dude was actually helping her stand on her feet. And that is where they fell in love. I told Amanda that this was a buttload of bullshit. Both of us knew that if Stacy was actually being abused and had been honest about it with the family, everyone would have gone out and supported her. I am all for believing victims, but Stacy is a conniving vixen, and I just cannot fathom Jeremy being abusive. She is a manipulating a-hole. I told Amanda that if Stacy admitted in front of both Jeremy and the entire family that she was actually being abused, I would let her stay in my house for as long as she wanted. Amanda's eyes lit up at that, and she rushed to call Stacy. Well, guess what? Stacy refused to have this confrontation point blank. She said that she did not want to air her dirty laundry in front of everyone and that Amanda owed it to her as a sister. That was when Amanda's brain started working for herself for once. She pressed Stacy, asking her if the abuse accusations were true. But Stacy did not say anything. When Amanda continued to pester her, Stacy broke down and said that she had lied because she wanted at least someone from the family to be in the loop while she met Nathan. Amanda was speechless while I felt smug initially. I could see how horribly Amanda's trust was broken. She disconnected the call and hugged me and started weeping. She's been a mess the entire time after the call, and she is refusing to talk to Stacy and has barred her from our house. I feel so heartbroken for my wife, but I also know that this was meant to happen. There had to be some sort of drama for everyone to actually realize what a bitch Stacy was, and now everyone knows. Update 2. Stacy has been calling us nonstop for help and advice. Nathan has dumped her because she went crying to him, asking him to take her in since she had nowhere to go and has been boycotted by the entire family. To no one's surprise, Nathan has refused to take her in, and she is now effectively homeless. Nathan says that this was a fling and he had never intended for it to become so serious and that she should focus on rebuilding her trust with her husband instead of pursuing him. In short, Stacy is screwed for good. Her parents aren't talking to her and Amanda cannot bear to see her face. The kids were with Viv for a while, but they are now back with Jeremy. Stacy showed up at Viv's house in the middle of the night begging for help. Viv had no option but to let her in, but she had made it categorically clear that Stacy would have to leave first thing in the morning because she had no intention of housing a cheetah. The next morning, Stacy had locked herself in the room and was refusing to come out. She said she had nowhere to go and that she would rot and die in this room, but not go out. It was a whole headache and Jeremy had to be called. Apparently, some truce has been reached where Stacy is allowed to stay in Jeremy's house, the kids had begun to ask about her anyway, but he would be moving forward with divorce proceedings. Stacy cried and begged Jeremy to forgive her and that they could try out couples counseling and therapy, but he was adamant. He says that she chose to cheat on him when he had always honored her wishes and done everything he could to provide for the family. And now she had to live with the consequences. Since Stacy has no income, it's pretty obvious that the kids will stay with mostly Jeremy after the divorce. It's a sad situation for Stacy, but nobody is feeling sad or sorry for her. Her parents have cut her off entirely and they said, Our hearts are not as big as Jeremy's. We have not raised this monster and we will not have anything to do with her henceforth. Her sisters are furious. 
she has lost every ounce of support in her life. And ironically, the only person remotely there for her is the same husband she cheated on so willingly. Update three. Stacy got a job and has moved out because she couldn't live with the guilt in the same house as Jeremy. A man that is still broken and has minimized contact with her family members because she has come to realize that a large part of her life was about being controlled and indirectly influenced by her family. She has started therapy and a lot of deep-seated issues are coming to the fore. She has certainly become more assertive and has started taking a stand for herself, especially when it comes to family, and I'm so proud of her. In other news, Viv is getting married in three months from now and Stacy has not been invited. Jeremy and the kids are obviously invited and Stacy is very salty about it. She had hoped that the family would come around eventually, but she has been completely ousted from the family. The final kick was no invitation to Viv's wedding. Stacy put up an entire woe is me post on social media, but it was shut down scathingly by my mother-in-law who said that she could also air dirty laundry in public. And Stacy would not even be left with Facebook friends after that. That shut her up. The kids go to her on weekends and Jeremy has been keeping it civil for the sake of the kids. He has adjusted to his new routine, so there's that. Jeremy, Viv's fiance Raza and I go out every Saturday for a boy's night and we try to set him up with women. So far, there's been no success, but he's gradually getting his confidence back. Things are looking up for everybody except Stacy, and she deserves it. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.